Alright, welcome to part 2 in this video series. This time we'll be covering how to collect and display the metrics we outlined in part 1. Previously, the recommended tool has been the Puppet Metrics Dashboard module, but we've deprecated and replaced that one with this, the new Puppet Operational Dashboards module. Depending on when this video goes live and when you're watching it, there may already be a deprecation notice on the Forge page for the previous module that will refer you to this one. A quick note that Operational Dashboards is unfortunately not backwards compatible with the previous module, mostly because of a major version upgrade from InfluxDB 1 to 2. So our recommendation therefore would be to classify a new node with this module, although manually upgrading InfluxDB from 1 to 2 before switching to the new module should also be an option. As outlined here in this section of the readme, this module sets up three applications to satisfy all of your Puppet Metrics needs. InfluxDB for storing the metrics as time series data, Telegraph for collecting metrics from Puppet services and storing them in InfluxDB, and Grafana for displaying the metrics as time series data plots. Each of these tools have their own Puppet module that we make use of as a dependency of this one. Telegraph and Grafana are maintained by the community, while InfluxDB is written by Puppet. By me, actually, so you know who to come find if things don't work. Other than those dependencies, there are a couple of other prerequisites needed before getting started namely a gem for working with TOML data and configuration for getting metrics from Postgres databases. For Puppet Enterprise users, we have a profile class to take care of those, so the example here of including the Enterprise Infrastructure class in your PE Infrastructure Agent node group is a good option. For open source users, you can make use of this profile class from the InfluxDB module to take care of the gem dependency. But because Postgres is not a managed resource in Open Source Puppet, we unfortunately can't provide a one-size-fits-all solution there. But there is a module for managing Postgres instances provided by us on the Forge that should be able to help you out with that. Once that's taken care of, we're ready to start installing and configuring the tools we need. The second step here from the beginning list section is all that's needed to set up a default installation, where the node you apply the class to will run all of InfluxDB, Telegraph, and Grafana. In PE, we can automatically detect the nodes that are running the services that we want to collect metrics from, so there's no need to supply a list of them or update any configuration if you add or remove any of these nodes. Open source users will need to set a few options in the Puppet Operational Dashboard's Telegraph Agent class, namely the first three listed here, a list of Puppet server hosts, Puppet DB hosts, and Postgres hosts. Some of the other options most worth mentioning here relate to token authentication. So one of the major changes to InfluxDB2 is that authentication is now required. In our case, that means we need to create two different tokens, both of which can automatically be created and managed by this module. A token with administrative privileges for configuring the application and managing all the resources, and a token with more limited permissions to read and write metrics. If you're using the module to install a new InfluxDB instance, an administrative token will be created as part of initial setup and saved to the root user's home directory. All related resources are able to make use of this token, so there's no further configuration or actions you need to take regarding this. However, if you already have an instance installed or you don't wish to keep the token on disk, there is a parameter for both tokens. This section of the documentation has an example of the recommended way to do this, which is to use Hira EYAML. This involves encrypting the token and setting the encrypted value in Hira data, which will then be decrypted during catalog compilation. Note that the default for the admin token is to look up the value for InfluxDB token, with the idea that it can be shared between the two modules. This example shows how to set the value and automatically convert it to a sensitive data type, which prevents it from being displayed in logs and reports. The eYAML encrypted string in brackets should be replaced with the contents of the encrypted string returned by Hira eYAML. Finally, if you wanted a little more control over these things and to manage some of these resources in your own puppet code, I'll end with an example on how to do that. To start, I'll begin writing a simple profile class and declaring some variables to represent how I want the resources to be. We do need to know a little bit about how InfluxDB organizes resources, which is basically by organization. For example, a set of metrics are inserted into what's called a bucket, and that bucket is in turn owned by an organization. So I've started with naming my organization, bucket, and a couple of users I want to give access to the system. Next, I'll declare the InfluxDB class and tell it the name of the organization bucket that I want. Because I already have an existing installation, this won't result in any changes, but if I were installing it fresh, then it would use these as the initial defaults. Next, I'll add the resources to create the users, organization, and bucket that I want. Also note that I'm making use of the require meta parameter here to ensure that the resources are applied in the correct order. 
In this case, for these resources, the InfluxDB class needs to be applied before the user and the organization, because that class is what installs and configures the application and the server. The bucket needs to require both the class and the organization to exist, because the bucket is created underneath the organization. Finally, I will declare the Puppet Operational Dashboards class, and I will tell it that I don't want it to manage InfluxDB, because I am doing that here in this code, as well as which organization and bucket to use. Now we can run the agent on my dashboard node and take a look at the changes. Since I already had InfluxDB installed and configured how I wanted it, there were no changes from the main InfluxDB class, but we can see that my users were created, my new organization and bucket were created, and there were some configuration changes related to that. I'm showing a set of changes on my existing system so that most of the relevant details can fit on the screen here. Uh, we can see that there was some configuration changes for Telegraph, where it picked up the new organization and bucket name, as well as the provisioning data source for Grafana. Since that file contains one of our tokens, we've marked it sensitive there, and it won't show up in logs or reports like here. So that's an example of how we use sensitive to protect against that kind of thing. One last note about the users we just created, which is that they won't be able to log into Influx to set their initial password until they're actually added to an organization. So I've added this line here to set the members of my organization to be the users. We can run the agent again after saving those changes, and now we can see that they've been added to my organization. And that brings us to the end of our example, as well as to the end of this video. I know that we didn't actually look at any metrics in this part, but I thought there was already enough information here, and that would be a good topic for the final segment where we talk about interpreting and viewing the metrics. So I'll see you then.